Yes. Can, you, can you hear me? Now? It is. All right. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Front of the court, what is the status of this file? The defendant has a support obligation of $291 and a balance of $3,454.70. A $331 payment was received in February of 2024 and a payment of $295 was received in November of 2023 and $100 in September of 2023. Payments seem to be only made when show calls, cause letters are sent. The front of the court is seeking guidance from the court on how to proceed today. Thank you. It's my understanding, Mr. Kishelniak. Well, I'll deal with this first file and then I'll call this next one. Uh, Mr. Kishelniak, what do you want to say regarding this matter? Uh, I, I've been working on trying to get up some more money. Money's just been really tight lately. Uh, I'm waiting on some more checks to come in, but as soon as they come in, I'll begin to make some more payments. What do you do for employment, sir? I'm a mechanic. I'm self-employed. Self okay. Thank you. Yes, sir. Do you own or rent or live with somebody? I own. And what is your monthly house payment? Uh, 700 a month. And do you have anyone else that helps you make any of your monthly payments or do you make those all on your own? Uh, all on my own. What other type of monthly payments do you have? Do you have a car payment? No car payment. Okay. Yeah, it's an electric. Okay, so you got standard utilities, any other payments that you have? Any loans or other payments you have to uh, make? Uh, just tool payments. <clears throat> That's another $400 a month. And do you have equity in the residence that you own? Uh, yeah, no. It's not paid off yet. <clears throat> if it's not paid off. What I'm asking is, do you think the balance that is owed is the value of the house or is there equity based on what the balance yeah. is? Equity in the house, yes. All right, you're about thirty, almost $3,500 behind. And it sounds like you, payment history has not been the greatest over the last six months. There's been a few payments, but certainly not what is the consistent payment. Is that accurate? Yes. All right. You need to make this a priority as you make your other payments a priority. And if there's equity in the house, there's always that ability to get yourself back on track if you are not getting regular income to make the necessary payment. Yeah, I, I, I can definitely make that happen. Um, I just, while we're here, what do I have any rights to the girls for the Molly's kids, for my girls? Well, as far as you're discussing what your parenting time order is, that is not a discussion for today. Um, I'm, just, I'm not discussing, sir, I'm not discussing parenting. I, just, I was just wondering if I have any parental rights whatsoever to these kids. Well, I, I think as the father, you should know that and know what your last order is. I'm just here to address your child support matter. Yeah, yeah, I understand that. But being that you're the judge, I keep getting mixed signals. Saying, I keep getting told I have no rights, then I have some. You're the judge. You, you've got my, my case in front of you. I would like to hear it from you. <laughs> well, that's what we're not here for today, sir. I'm the referee. I'm here today on your support motion. If you file a parenting time motion or anything like that, we would address that. Um, but we have numerous cases today. This isn't just conference hour with what the status of your case is that your case is for something that is not set before the court. Okay, sounds good. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be in this week to make a payment. What type of payment do you think you can make, sir? Uh, that's all going to depend on who shows up with the checks that show up. Uh, it could be anywhere from 300 to 500, <laughs> hopefully. All right, because you've not made a March a payment in March, is that correct? March, yes, I did make a payment in March. Uh, I made 800 uh, to made an 800 dollar payment to the friend of the court just a week ago. All right, well, perhaps perhaps I missed that information. Did he make a recent payment? I didn't have that information. The last payment I believe was made on. February 23rd. Okay. So, sir, you believe you made a payment since that February 23rd date? Uh, I believe it was March 1st. Uh, it was a payment of $800. Does that go towards both cases or just this one case? 
That was supposed to be divided up between both cases. For the court, do you know if on February 23rd he made a payment of about $800? To um, see if he got yeah, his dates mixed up. He made a payment of 469 on one case and 331 which I believe that ends up being $800. All right, so that's $800, but that was on February 23rd? Correct. All right. All right, sir. So that eight hundred dollar payment was February twenty third, which took care of your February payment. Obviously, March is not over yet, so you've got time to make it. Okay. But I just want you to understand, that you have not made a March payment. So what I'm going to do is adjourn your matter out to May first. Okay. So by that time, you should have made been able to make your March and April payments. So in this case. Your required payment is at least two ninety one. So we'll come back on March or sorry, April, May first to make sure you made your March and April payments. If those haven't been made, then we will address that matter. Okay. So I'll call your other case also. I'll call the case of Ashley Ludwizak versus Kenneth yeah, Shelley, yeah. Mr. Shelliak present. Is the other party present on this matter? All right. I see somebody present, but they're muted. Ma'am, if you could please unmute yourself. Gosh, I'm present. Thank you. This is Ashley Levichak. Thank you. Is there anything that you would like to say or any comments you have on this matter, ma'am? At this time, I don't have any uh, anything to say except for I was wondering what, why there was a show cause still if he made a payment. Um, so I was just wondering about that. All right, the court, what is the status of this law? The defendant's court obligation on this case is $429, and his balance is $6,763.12. There was that payment received in February in the amount of $430. And then previous to that, um, November of 2023 was $100, and also in September, an additional $100. All right, thank you. So, ma'am, that should answer your question why the show cause is set. Um, certainly, he's got a, a very poor history of recent payments and a large uh, balance. Mr. Kashaniak, anything else you want to say regarding this matter? What I'm inclined to do is also set this matter for May 1st with the expectation that you will have made your March and April payments. Um, if all that stuff is done, then that May 1st date will be nice and easy. If it's not done, then we'll address the issue of contempt. Is there anything else you want to say, sir? Nope, that's it. Thank you, Judge. All right. Thank you both for appearing. That does conclude the matter. We'll see you back here May 1st. Yep. Bye. Thank you, Judge. Yes, I'm here. Thank you. Friend of the court, what is the status of this matter? The defendant has a support obligation of $326 and a balance of $6,565.27. A payment of $203.44 was received in January of 2024 and December and November of 2023 in the same amount from a prior income withholding order. There has been no contact from the defendant. The front of the court seeks guidance from the court on how to proceed today. Thank you. Mr. Dravick, what would you like to say? I've been laid off since October. Um, I came pretty close for January, December, and November. I didn't realize I was that far behind. I'm starting work. So I should be able to make my payments from here on out. When you were laid off, did you collect unemployment or not? No. No, I worked under the table and worked as much as I could. So during the layoff, you're saying you worked under the table? Yeah, I was cutting firewood. It was a bad year for firewood. All right, did you have any sort of income in... February? No. And when are you going back to work? I'm slowly transitioning into it right now. I um, started, but I don't know if it's going to last or not because the weather's supposed to turn bad again. All right. What are you doing for employment? What's the plan? I'm a mechanic at a golf course. Is that a job that you've had previously? Yeah, I had this job since last year. 
Is that the job where the income of holding order was coming out of? Yeah. Okay. All right, I'm gonna adjourn your case to May 1st. Is that a show cause? I'm not sure. Okay. All right, great, got the answer. So I'll adjourn you, sir, to May 1st. Um, if you get back into your regular employment, make sure you let the front of the court know. Hopefully that income withholding order will is still active and they'll start getting payments. But if they're not getting payments, then you need to make payments on your own until that happens. Do you understand? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. There's I have one more thing. Um, there should have been a nine hundred and thirty-six dollar payment made to the front of the court. Is that from your taxes or what's that from? Yeah, that's from my taxes. Okay, that probably just hasn't been processed yet. Um, that was taken out of your taxes. That will get processed though. Thank you for that information. All right, so you're all set. We'll see you back here May 1st. Yeah, all right, thank you. Danny Ray is here. Good morning, sir. In front of the court, what is the status of this matter? Your Honor, this is a mayor's only uh, support obligation defendant. Does currently have fifty dollars ordered out of beers and a current balance on the account of two thousand nine hundred ninety-seven dollars and seventy-four cents. He did make a payment in February in the amount of fifty dollars. Uh, he was incarcerated, and the support is still currently showing as abated. Therefore, we are requesting that child support be referred back to us to do uh, to reinstate support. Thank you, Mr. Ray. What would you like to say? Um, I, this was just all brought on me, so I, I'm I'm doing what I can do to get payments made up. So, and I, they do uh, they did put in for a garnishment. I do believe. All right. So, is it accurate that you were incarcerated, but you are now out? Yes. All right. And how long have you been out of jail? Uh, a little over a year. At this point, I, do you, are you working right now? Yes. All right. What are you doing for employment? Construction. You get a paycheck. Do you get paid cash? It's a paycheck. Okay. Who's your employer? J and J Construction. Okay. All right. We'll get that information. What I will do is refer this for an updated child support recommendation. And then we'll bring it back here to um, May 22nd to see where we're at uh, with payments as well as that new support recommendation. Do you have any questions regarding that, sir? No. I think you've got a second file, is that correct? Yep. We'll call that file. The court will call the matter of Brianna McMurphy versus Danny Stacks. Your Honor, the defendant has a support obligation of $388 and a current balance on the account of $7,578.50. This payment received this February in the amount of $100. Uh, defendant, I have spoken with him and he was incarcerated, said he was not aware of the case. All right. So, what would you like to say regarding this matter? Uh, basically, just what she said. Uh, I had no idea that I had this court obligation for child support until a letter got sent to my daughter's house for a court date. And that's when I found out about both of these court dates that I've had. So, um, again, I've, I've been, I made a couple payments on this one and they are doing the garnishment for my paycheck. So whenever that kicks in, it's, you know, I'm, I'm just doing what I can do from all this throwing on me after you know after a year all right of course is that correct that income withholding orders in process i believe so okay i'll double check all right we'll do is adjourn us to may 22nd just to follow up on that income withholding order um obviously sir if that's not in place and until it's in place you should be making some payments on your own okay yep all right thank you we'll see you back here may 22nd all right thank you your honor gerald very good record Thank you. Good morning. In front of the court, what is the status of this matter? Yeah, the matter was adjourned from January 17th to monitor 
the defendant's jail sentencing and allow him time to file a support motion. Uh, he does have a monthly obligation of $261. Current balance on the account is $3,608.66. Payment received in January 2024 was $50. I have been in frequent communication with the, with the defendant. Uh, he has supplied information from his probation officer and has also filed the support motion. Uh, support motion was mailed um, March 11th. So, Mr. Barry, what would you like to say, sir? Um, just that I have that motion. Um, it's uh, the hearing is 27th. So if we can address everything on the 27th of March, I have written a letter and, uh, you know, I, I, I just would like a, a chance to finish this program and uh, hopefully get an abatement for the time that I'm in this place since it's court ordered. All right. Well, since you have that pending, then we will... Uh deal with both matters on March 27th. All right, we'll see you then, sir. Yeah, Matt. All right, thank you. I'm here, Your Honor. Thank you. Friend of the court, what is the status of this matter? The matter was adjourned from November 15th of 2023 after the defendant presented a doctor's note regarding her pregnancy. I believe she was due to deliver in December and we adjourned the matter out to reassess the situation at this time. Um, she has a monthly obligation of $208 with a current balance on the account of $4,275.37. The last payment received was in September of 2023 in the amount of $50. Thank you. Ma'am, what would you like to say? Um, I do plan on making a payment this week of $50. Um, and I can, I've been looking for uh, child care for my new baby so I can, um, are working soon. So I'm in the process of getting um, a job and finding daycare for my um, three month old. So I do plan on um, making payments as soon as I start working again. All right. Well, I think there is good cause to adjourn to monitor the situation. I'll adjourn your case to May 22nd. Thank you. No either party on that matter present. Thank you. Heather Green is here as well. Thank you. Part of the court, what is the status of this matter? Your Honor, the defendant has a monthly support obligation of $1,040 and a current account balance of $36,956.58. Last payment received was for March in the amount of $426.09. Uh, previous to that, it was $50 in January. Uh, the defendant does have an active income withholding, however, it is not meeting the monthly obligation. That March payment was from the income withholding? Yes, sir. All right. Uh, sir, what would you like to say regarding this matter? Um, I'll be back on time with the payments. Um, like I said, you guys got the monthly withholding. Um, I had some issues and family issues. That's why payments were not made. All right. So you expect your hours and your income to get back on track. Is that what you're indicating? Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Green, any comments or anything that you would like to say or questions you have? No, I don't really have anything to say about it. All right. We'll adjourn this matter to May 1st to see how those payments are going. Um, given his representation that the payments will be increasing. So we'll be, be back here April or May 1st to make sure that that's happening. Any questions? No, sir. All right. No, thank you. All right. Thank you. Uh, well, for a period, that does conclude the matter. You may sign off on that matter. Present. If either party is present, they need to unmute and identify themselves for the record. There was... As indicated previously, an individual labeled as Kayla Haddix who did not respond when the case was called and given an opportunity. That person is no longer in the court's Zoom room. Front of the court, what is the status of this file? Your Honor, the plaintiff has a monthly support obligation of $300. All right, I guess we, may, we might have Ms. Haddix speaking now. Is that correct? All right. 
just to be clear, if Kayla Haddix is present, you need to speak and identify yourself for the record. Kayla Haddix present. Thank you. All right, friend of the court, what is the status of this matter? Your Honor, the plaintiff has a monthly support obligation of $304. Current balance on the account is $2,192.06. The last payment received was in December of 2023 in the amount of $62.14. Thank you. Ms. Haddix, what would you like to say regarding this matter? Um, I've been trying. I just, there's been a lot outside that had happened. Um, and I just, I won't be, I can't afford my rent and this payment and food. Like, I just, I can't do all three. It's either I pay my child support or I'm homeless at this point. And what do you do for employment? I'm a tutor at an elementary school. Okay, who is your employer? Um, AmeriCorps. You provided that information to front of the court previously? Um, I'm not sure. How many hours do you work that job? 40. And what is your rate of pay? It is $1,008 every two weeks. And I think you indicated that you rent, is that correct? Yes. And what is your monthly rent? $1,075. Do you live live alone or do you share expenses with anyone? I live alone. And do you have any other <coughs> regular monthly payments that you have to make? Um, my utility bill, um, my car insurance, and um, I owe my mom for my car. Okay. All right, I'm going to... Adjourn your matter to see what type of payments you can get in, as well as to allow front of court to pursue a income withholding order, get an employment. Uh, front of court, do you need any additional information at this time? No. Okay. All right, so I'll adjourn your case to May 22nd, and we'll see where you're at with payments then, as well as an income withholding order. Any questions, ma'am? Okay. Uh, no. All right. All right, thank you. We'll see you back here May 22nd. Parties on that matter present. Mr. Reiner, can you hear me okay? Yeah, can you hear me? Yes. And okay. is Mr. Cherry. I do see somebody present in the courtroom, in the Zoom room. If that person is Mr. Cherry, you need to unmute and identify yourself for the record. <clears throat> All right, for the court, we're here today on a petition regarding child care. Is that correct? That's correct, Your Honor. All right, it looks like there was an expense submitted by a defendant and that was sent to the plaintiff to see if she agreed or disagreed with that credit. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. Ms. Reminder, did you receive that notice? I must have misplaced the mail, the first letter that I got, but I did see the thing about the Zoom. So I apologize for that. All right. Well, did you see that uh, he had submitted a request for credit for child care in the amount of $720? Yes, I agree with that. Okay. So you're in agreement with that amount? Yep. I agree with that. Okay. All right. So we'll take care of that. Anything else from front of the court? No, you're right. All right. All right. Thank you for appearing, Mr. Reminder. You're yep. all set. Have a, have a nice day. Bye. Love you. I see Veronica Lindberger here, too. Do we have a case that we don't know about? Um, well, I, so after um, our last meeting, uh, you told me that I had to file for a motion to uh, to get the uh, parenting uh -huh. test, and that's what I did after. Um, I just had I'm not over in Gaylord uh, anytime Monday through Friday because of work, so I had my mom turn them in, uh, being she was the third party on the hearing and the order. Hold on one second, they're gonna check the file and the docket because 
didn't appear on our docket for today, but we'll get that figured out. Okay. So sit tight. The court's going to pull that file. All right, sir. So it does not appear that the appropriate paperwork was filed to get this matter scheduled for today. Sounds like at one point there was a request for a hearing date um, that was given, but then nothing was officially filed with the court to get this on today's docket. Um, so okay. So you can refile, get a new date and refile, but you got to make sure you do all the paperwork appropriately. Um, well, I thought I did. Uh, my, my question is like, I'm, like I said, I'm not in Gaylord anytime from Monday through Friday because of my work schedule. Um, so I tried to have my mom, my mom turn the, turn in the motion, the, uh, and have that filed and they gave it back to her and they, the paper, uh, that they gave back to her, they wrote on this, uh, this meeting, uh, with this date and time. Yeah. So that's why I, I thought that it was something was going to be addressed today. Well, no, you get that document with the date, then you have to file it with the clerk. You've got to send a copy to the other party. So there are steps that you have to do to, to get the matter officially filed with the court. So you'll okay. get a date provided from this court and you get a document with whatever it is motion you're seeking. You have to file that then with the county clerk as well as provide a copy to the other party. Okay, but she has a she has a personal protection order on me. Um, so am I supposed to just give it to her like during our switch offs with Phoenix? Well, I would, you can mail it. Yeah. You're allowed to mail court documents. Okay. If it's her um, address, you can give a postage paid envelope and then in front of the court can mail it out. And if you don't have her address, then you can give it, That's you can give the clerk a envelope with the postage on it. And then the friend of the court will take care of sending it if you don't have her address. Okay. So what, what am I supposed to uh, to fill out and give her, give to her. All because... right. So this is not this is not attorney hour <laughs> with the judge. Um, the, the procedures are pretty simple. You can. I, I'm not here to give you legal advice on how to do everything. I've probably given you more than necessary already. But you did not file the proper procedure. You need to get that done if you want to get back on the docket. Okay. All right. I've got other cases to move on to that are actually scheduled for today. Thank you. M. Mr. Kremkow, can you hear me? Okay. Uh, yes, I can hear you. Thank you. And Ms. Bailey Quick, if you could place your appearance on the record. Thank you, Miranda Bailey Quick, on behalf of Celeste Field, who is present with me in my office. Thank you. And Ms. Bailey Quick, this is your motion regarding a passport. Is that correct? That is correct. All right. Mr. Kremkow, are you in opposition to the passport being renewed? Uh, no. I wasn't clear as to what this was about. I kind of had a guess as to what it was. I still haven't received the motion of for the appearance for today. All right. Well, my, my question though is, are you in, do you oppose the passport getting renewed? Yes. I oppose the passport getting renewed. All right. So let's really quick. We don't have a ton of time today. I don't know if we can, proceed with a hearing today. Um, I guess we can see if we, if you think you can hit all the high points as to um, what the court would need to make that determination. I'm, our next hearing is at 1030, so I do have 15 minutes. Uh, do you think that's enough to make your presentation and argument on this matter? I do. Okay. All right, then I'll let you proceed. Um, yes. So this issue previously went before the court back in 2018. Since that time, the minor child has had a passport. And back in 2018, the Philippines was not a Hague Convention country. It is now a Hague Convention country since February 18th, 2022. It also um, is important to note, which is not in my pleadings, um, my client advised me today that she was granted citizenship in 2022 as well. Um, back in 2018, the um, circumstances have s significantly changed. My client now um, owns property here in Otsego County. She's a successful business owner and um, is a member of a number of different community organizations that I included in my motion. Um, if, if the court would like me to highlight those, I'm happy to do so. I think the most important thing is, is that... Um, my my client has it, she's originally from the philippines she has her immediate family and extended family still in the philippines the modified custody and parenting time order 
um, provides that she is the primary custodial parent and um, which essentially means that she has the minor child the majority of the time and she would like to take the minor child um, to the Philippines to see her extended family. Um, we did already go to mediation on this issue. There was no resolution. And I understand Mr. Um, Kremkow's argument that you know her family comes here. Her parents may come here, but her extended family does not come here. And it's important for the minor child to see where she came from and to um, see those extended family members. Um, Um, I think it's also important to note that the parties also took Chase to the Philippines when he was six months old. Again, um, the, the minor child previously had the passport. Um, you know, if if it was an issue of providing safeguards, uh, we, we would, again, happily do that as long as there's timely responses from Mr. Kremkow, as I included in my motion uh, it was months before he even responded. And that was also with mediation trying to reach Mr. Kremkow. Um, I did, in fact, provide him with a copy of the motion to his address of record with the court. If that has changed, he needs to update that with the court and, <laughs> and let me know if that's the case. Otherwise, I'm going to continue to send pleadings to that address of record. Um, that essentially is the, the motion, Your Honor. It's pretty straightforward. And again, my client is simply trying to give the minor child an opportunity and experience um, to see and uh, have an uh, have a relationship with her extended family and see where she comes from as he continues to um, get older. Okay, I'm going to have you. I'm going to put your client under oath and just have you ask her um, again, get her ties to the community and why it is she's seeking her the, seeking the passport. Um, sure under oath and on the record. So ma'am, would you please raise your right hand? You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, Your Honor. All right, would you please state your name for the record? Celeste Veal. All right, thank you. Ms. Bailey Quick, you may begin. Thank you. Celeste, um, you you have real property here in Otsego County with your husband? Yes. And you have a number of businesses here in Otsego County as well? Yes, we do. Can you identify those for the court? Yes. Um, my husband and I own Celeste Lovely Services, which is a, um, the mother company of Celeste Lovely Camper Rental. That is our DBA. We also own together DNC Properties LLC, which is real estate. And I also own Celeste Lovely Photography LLC. And what um, organizations are you me a member of? I am a member of uh, Gaylord Chamber of Commerce, and I'm also an ambassador for uh, the chambers, and I'm also um, an ambassador for Otsego Community Foundation. Okay. And uh, in in the past, you have also received certain awards from various community um, organizations. Is that correct? Correct. Can you identify that for the court? Yes. In 2022, I was recognized as the uh, Don Ways Business of the Year Business Person of the Year Award. And just last month, it's not on the paper, but um, I was recognized by Northern Express as the 20 top fascinating people in Michigan. When you mean on the paper, you're talking about in the motion, the written motion yes. that was filed. Yeah, it's not on. Because <clears throat> at that time, it wasn't yeah, known it yet. It just happened. All right. And um, in the past, Chase has had a passport. Yes. Okay. And um, it, do you have any plans on kidnapping Jace and not returning him to the United States? No, I do not. Do you have other children that you have in common with your husband? We do. We have two other kids, and, three total. And where do they attend school? Um, go. They go to our youngest. Girl. Right. And Jace also attends where? Jace goes to right. intermediate. Okay. So all here in Otsego County. Yes. Mm -hmm. I also referenced in my argument that you became a citizen in 2022. Is that correct? Correct. And is it accurate based on the motion that you did in fact reach out to Mr. Um, Kremkow back in October of 2022, asking for his consent to renewing the passport? Yes. And and when did you ultimately hear from Mr. Kremkow? I believe that was in December 23rd. All right. It, 
Is there anything else that you want to um, provide the court as it relates to this issue? Um, no, I don't know. I'm just sorry. I know you're nervous. Sorry, but... I'm just really nervous. Okay. So I just want, I do have a follow-up question. Your parents do um, periodically come here to visit. Is yes, that they do come. Um, they had a, they were granted a 10-year visa, but I believe that's about to expire. All right. And as far as extended family, outside of just your, your parents, have any of your extended family come? No, they, they couldn't afford it. Okay. All right, I don't have any further questions. All right, thank you. Mr. Krumkow, do you have any questions for this witness? Um, yeah, if, if I may so. All right, sir, do you have a video that works? Yes. All right, can you start your video, please? Thank you. Okay. Have you ever threatened to take Jace and run to the Philippines to disappear and never come back? No, but it, I did make a comment when you were using drugs, and I said I didn't want you to do that, and I didn't want that around Jay's. But I did make a threat that I would never come back. Because since we have divor got divorced, even though I had chances to leave, I stayed because I want him to grow up knowing you. I had all the chances to leave, Jack, and you know that. I don't think we have enough time to dig all into this. I mean, especially with the, the dramatic um, appearances and, and all that. I understand. Your Honor, I would I also ask to keep any questions related to since the last order, which was August 9th of 2018 on this issue. Okay. Um, Mr. Krupka, do you have any questions? Yes. Okay, go ahead. Have you ever came into, okay, since we want to stick to this last order, have you ever came in front of the referee and or judge and have stated that you do not have a job, have no income, and so on? Yeah, and I'm not object as to relevance. And relevance is, is building trust. Can I, can I finish my argument? Mr. Kremkow, Mr. Kremkow, you need to allow the counsel to place their objection on the record before you interrupt, okay? Your Honor, my client has turned over all of her financial information to the front of the court for purposes of a child support recommendation, and in fact, even deviated so that pursuant to the last order, Mr. Kremkow wouldn't have to pay child support based on the, the recommendation. So I, I don't know what relevance that even has to this motion. All right. Sir, what is, how is that question relevant? It's relevant because it, it goes upon trust, and, and I have the um, transcripts from the past um, hearings, and it, the big thing right, is trust. And she has came before. I will, you. Uh, I will sustain the objection. She's testified as to what her current ties are to the area, um, so I will sustain the objection. Any other questions, sir? Not right now. No. All right, Miss Bailey Quick. Any additional questions? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. All right, Mr. Krepkow, did you want to provide any of your own testimony? Yes. So, All right, would you please raise, hold on. Would you please raise your right hand? You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. All right, go ahead. So the big thing is the trust. No. I've Even know. recently in mediation, I gave um them the, the the opportunity to to start building trust and um that was just thrown out the window the big thing is trust and the big thing is safety yes um the philippines may have um recently become a hague con uh, a place um but it's still a third world country it's still very dangerous um and still huge, huge, huge risk. I mean, myself, I mean, even when I was over there as an adult, I became sick. I got sick over there. Um, so as for a, a young child with not the, the immune system as an adult would have, that's another huge risk. Big thing is safety and the big thing is, is trust. Ms. Malari has um, obviously threatened to take Jace and disappear to the Philippines and never I'm come not back. Object. So There's no so facts forth. and evidence as to that. All right, I'll sustain that. All right, sir, anything else? Um, I 
I mean, the, the, the big thing is they come in front of you and they, they kind of, uh, they paint this big story of how great she is in the community, but you really don't know everything behind the scenes and, and the trust and the issues that are there. Okay. Anything else, sir? That's it. All right. Um, anything else you want to say, Ms. Bailey, quick? No, Your Honor. All right. Thank you. All right. Well, given the testimonies of the parties, uh, this matters in this case, parties agree that the child has previously had a passport. Um, this field is seeking to either renew that passport or establish or reestablish a passport, um, in particular for travel to Philippines where she has family. The testimony indicates she has strong ties here to the community, other children that live in this community. Her kids are all in school in the community. She owns property and a business. There's not appear to be any hidden agenda to flee the country and never return with the child in this matter. Uh, it's simply a trip to visit family. Uh, I think in the child's, it is in the child's best interest to have a passport. And I would grant the motion, uh, grant the plaintiff's motion. Um, Ms. Bailey, quick, I would ask that you prepare an order. I just want to make sure you get whatever language, we get whatever language is appropriate and necessary to get, uh, the, that would satisfy the authorities to issue the passport. Uh, but I am granting the motion. I would ask that you submit an order to the court. Um, thank you. I think that order is going to have to include, there is a scale form in relation to um, the child having a passport. So I can certainly use that. But I think in that, it's also going to have to order Mr. Krumkow to sign the statement of consent for issuance of the passport to a child. All right. If his signature is absolutely required, then beyond the court order, then I would also indicate that he would have to comply with that court order. Anything additional, Ms. Bailey, quick? No, Your, Your Honor. Thank you. Mr. Kremkow, any questions? Nope. All right. Thank you both for appearing. That does conclude the matter. Thank you. Are the parties on that matter present? Yes. All right. We have Ms. Peters present. Is Terry Had present? I don't appear that Terry Had is present. Uh, Ms. Peters, this is your motion regarding child support. Is that correct? Yes. And you're asking that the child support be extended um, because your son is turning 18 before graduation. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. Okay. Let me put you under oath and just ask you a couple of questions. Would you please raise your right hand? Yes. You solemnly swear or affirm the testimony you're about to give will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes. All right. Thank you. All right, ma'am. Is it true that your son is currently attending high school on a regular full-time basis? Yes. And when is he expected to have enough credits to graduate? Uh, May 23rd is their graduation date. Okay. And it is expected that he will graduate that date? Yes, absolutely. Okay. And he's residing with you on a full-time basis? Yes. All right. And when did he turn 18? Uh, February 5th of this year, 2024. I'm sorry, you, you cut out, so I just want to. All right. What date? Uh, February 5th, 2024. All right. Thank you. All mm -hmm. right. Well, given that information, I do believe the statutory requirements are met, and I would grant the motion to extend support um, until the end of May 2024. Okay. Thank Any you. Uh, no. All right. no. You're all set. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you have the parties on that matter present? Yes, sir. All right. And sir, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. All right. Thank you. All right. Ms. Burns, this is your motion. Is that correct? Yes, it is. All right. Looks like at one point there was an ex parte order that was signed by the judge. Uh, what are you seeking at this time, ma'am? 50-50 uh, custody. I believe our son should have equal amount of time with father and myself for... The duration of his 10 years, he's basically been in my custody. I mean, me and Mr. Vordermark were married, obviously, for a period of time. 
Um, but our son has resided with me and, uh, he has some behavioral issues when it comes to school. Um, and I am feeling like, uh, his father needs to be more a part of his life and present at this time before the ex parte was filed uh, a month previous to that. I had stated to Mr. Vordemark that I needed help with our son. Um, and I needed him to be more involved in his life. And that is the reasoning for the 50, 50 custody. Mr. Vordemark, what is your position on 50, 50 custody? I am against 50, 50 custody. I am seeking full custody. Okay. All right. Then we'll, we got a couple of different options. One is the parties can attend mediation, but if you both have positions that you're dug in on, I don't know if that will get you anywhere. Um, so we can either try mediation and then if there's no resolution, go to a hearing, or we can simply skip the mediation part and just set the matter for a hearing. What are your thoughts, Ms. Burns? Um, I would like to, I guess I would like to attempt mediation. I don't feel it would be right, especially with the amount of time that our son has been with me to completely strip him of being with me and his brother. Um, I think that's going to cause more real issues right. in the law. I don't I don't need to get at all the facts. I just want to know if you wanted to try mediation. Sir, what is your thoughts on mediation or just proceeding to a hearing? Uh, my, I would like to just proceed to the hearing. The last time that we went to mediation, we had agreed in mediation. And then the following hearing, Ms. Burns showed up with a lawyer and said that she no longer agrees to that. She felt she was pushed and pressured into it. Um, I would like to not waste the time if the same... Yeah. All right. No, no problem. If the parties both don't want to attend mediation, I'm not going to order it. Um, I'll set the matter for a hearing. The next issue is how long we would need for the hearing. Um, Ms. Burns, other than yourself, do you intend to call any witnesses to testify? Um, no, not at this point in time. I have been without my son for three months. Mr. Vordemark has denied. Right. Just, ask him, just answer the questions I ask you. Um, do you intend to hire an attorney, ma'am, or represent yourself? Uh, I'll be representing myself. All right, Mr. Hornmark, do you intend to call any witnesses or just your own testimony? I would like to call witnesses from my son's school, um, but the only way that is possible is with a court summons. All right, well, you're free to, to draft a subpoena and have that signed by the court. Um, how many witnesses do you think you would call? Uh, just one, Your Honor. Okay. Do you intend to hire an attorney, sir? No, sir. Okay. Well, I think we could likely get this done in around an hour, maybe just a little over an hour. So I'm gonna set it for May 22nd. That is our next date with an hour available. So May 22nd at 11 a.m. That will be a in-person hearing, not by Zoom. So you'll be here in court. Uh, additionally, given the child's age, I would meet with the child. So the child should be brought here at 1045 for the required uh, in-person preference interview. So whoever has custody at that time needs to make sure he's here at 1045 and ideally have somebody that can take him either back to school or home after that interview. Any questions, Ms. Burns? Um, what? Hold on. I need to grab a pencil to write down that date. Um, what right. am I not allowed? I've been scrimping and scramming for time to be able to have my son. I get to see him every Sunday and I get to talk to him on the phone every night. It's been three months since my son has been home. I would really like to be able to have some time with my child. I mean, uh, this is a, whatever order, whatever order is in place is what controls at this time. You have filed a motion to, to change that order to appear. So we will have that motion heard on May 22nd. And that's at 11 a.m. Yes. Mr. Vordemark had wrote in the ex parte that after the investigations were done, that Aaron could come home. He, he's gone against that in the ex parte and he's all gone right, against well, all I can do is address all those issues at the evidentiary hearing ma'am okay anything that the two of you agree to you can agree to on your own but other than that I have to wait till I hear the arguments and the evidence on May 22nd before I change anything all right all right thank you both for appearing we'll see you here in person on May 22nd thank, thank you, you. the parties on that matter presence I'm here your honor Thank you. Ms. Steffies, if you could unmute and let me know that you can hear me okay. Yes, Your Honor. All right. And Ms. Steffies, these are your motions regarding pairing time and custody. And then there's also a show cause against Mr. Steffies. Is that correct, ma'am? 
Yes, sir. All right, and through your motions, what are you seeking to change or do? I would like to be able to see my children or at least talk to them on the phone. I haven't had any contact with them for over three years. So are you seeking pairing time? Are you seeking a change in custody? What is it that you are requesting? Parenting time. Okay. One of your motions mentioned custody, and I don't know if you're looking to change that too. And looking at the last order, which looks like the consent judgment of divorce in 2021, Mr. Steffi's had, was awarded the sole physical and sole legal custody of the children. Pairing time would be as the parties agree. It also did say that you would be entitled to phone and video contact with the children. Is that your understanding, ma'am, of what the last order was? Yes, and that's because I was going to jail. Okay. Mr. Steffies, what are your Steffies. thoughts on some type of established parenting time for Ms. Steffies? Uh, my thoughts are we, uh, in the judgment of divorce, it said there would be liberal uh, phone contact and uh, Carrie has not reached out to make a phone call or anything since she has been out of prison. So right. she has not exercised the parenting time set forth by the judgment of divorce. All right. Well, are you willing to discuss some type of phone call schedule and parenting time schedule? I am. Um, willing to discuss a phone call schedule, but in-person uh, visitation at this point, I'm not comfortable with, Your Honor. If there was a period of phone contact and kind of reestablishing, is that something you might later change your mind regarding parenting time? Uh, possibility. I asked just because I wonder if it makes sense for the two of you to go to mediation to see if you guys together can work out a plan or if it's more appropriate just to skip mediation and have a hearing, but mediation gives the parties, you know, certainly a, a greater opportunity to have your own input. You don't have to worry about the rules of evidence when trying to, you know, have discussions back and forth. Um, so that option exists. You don't have to do it, but that option is out there to try mediation first. If mediation is not successful, you can always then come back to court for a hearing. Uh, what are your thoughts on mediation, Mr. Stevens? Um, I'm, willing today to abide by the judgment of divorce as far as phone contact. Um, otherwise, I'd just go for an evidentiary hearing, Your Honor. All right, then we'll set the matter for an evidentiary hearing. Um, how many witnesses, if any, do you intend to call, sir? I intend to call uh, at least two. Okay. And Ms. Steffies, do you intend to call any witnesses or just testify yourself? Yes, I have three witnesses. All right. So what I'm going to do is set your matter then for a little bit longer time. I'll give you an afternoon. It would be May 22nd at 1 p.m. That would be an in-person hearing. The children are seven and six. Is that right? That's correct. Yeah. All right. So seven is the typical age cutoff that I use for interviews with the children, um, unless the parties ask for a child younger than that and can articulate to the court that they think the child can fully express um, their preference and understand it and the parents are okay with the child younger than that meeting with the court. So I will meet with the seven-year-old. As to the six-year-old, what's your position, Mr. Steffies? Do you think I should meet with the six-year-old or do you think that that's not uh, appropriate in this matter. He's very shy, I guess. Um, it's up to you, Your Honor. I'll abide by whatever you think. I, I typically, I typically don't meet with kids that age unless the parents say, "Hey, you know, just, you know, it's just different for every six-year-old." I don't think it's great to meet with a kid that young, but sometimes children are, you know, more apt for that type of meeting. But if you have hesitation, that would be my uh, thought not to meet with a six-year-old. You probably would not get too much out of him. He's very shy. Okay. So. All right. All right. So I will meet with the seven-year-old, though. So the seven-year-old needs to be here 15 minutes prior to that start time. Somebody should be here um, to then either take the seven-year-old back to school or back home after. 
Okay. So May 22nd. Thank you. So May 22nd at 1 p.m. for the start of the hearing, but the child should be here at 1245. Ms. Steffies, do you have any questions regarding that? Um, no, I was just wondering if we were going to uh, establish phone calls. All right. So, Mr. Steffies, the order does say that there is a right to phone calls. Are you able to, at this point, agree to some type of phone calls before we get to the hearing? Um, I'd be willing to do, like, uh, Sunday afternoons um, just to start out to keep the schedule. All right. What's a good time on Sunday? Um, does Carrie work? Is there a specific time for her? Right, I have man, what's a good time for a Sunday for a phone call? Um, any time is good. I did just start a job, but I don't have my schedule yet. Do you, but do I will you make it work. Sundays? No. Okay. All right, sir. So you know the kids' routine. So what's a good time do you think on Sunday? Between one and two o'clock. Let's just say at one o'clock, there should be a call then. And it's good. Is, does Miss Steffies have your phone number so she can initiate that call? Uh, as far as I know, she does. All right. Is that true, ma'am? Um, if it is, yeah, three seven. My sister in law has been trying to contact him to get make phone calls. She was trying to be our third okay. party. Is that a correct number, sir? That is a correct number, and I have not received any phone calls from a sister in law. All right, so we're going to set this matter for the hearing on May 22nd. We'll say between now and then there shall be phone calls every Sunday at 1 p.m. And obviously, if things are going well, those phone calls can increase whatever the parties agree on. Uh, but at a minimum, there will be that phone call on Sunday at 1 p.m. And Ms. Steffies, you are to place Thank the you. call, okay? Yes. All right. Thank you both for appearing. We'll see you back here May 22nd. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. Are the parties present? And can they hear me okay? Present. Present. Thank you. So, Ms. Osborne, you are the plaintiff in this matter. So, I will ask you first uh, do the two of you have any agreements at this time regarding custody and parenting time? Well, actually, right now, he went to his inpatient therapy stuff, and we are residing together and working together with the kids. So, I don't really know what would need to be done at this point well are you pursuing forward with the divorce case or not or just taking some time to think about it we're kind of in the middle of thinking about it because <clears throat> we've been to right. this point before and i have agreed to stop the process and then it kind of went south and so i'm hesitant to stop it again because then you have to re-establish and refile and I can also, you know, I can adjourn this case. I can move it out, you know, 60 days or so, and we can come back and see where the two of you are then. If he agrees with that, I think that would be appropriate. All right. I'm agreeing. You're agreeing? Okay. Yes, sir. All right. So what I'm going to do then is uh, we'll reschedule this matter for about 60 days, and we'll see where the two of you are at then. Okay? All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you both for appearing, and you may sign off.